Christmas Day. We got the Lakers uh, coming up against the Phoenix Suns. Let's talk about them. How much better, Jalen Rose, is this Lakers roster than it was a season ago because of the depth that they were able to add? It's actually um, dramatically better and improved and younger, more skilled. Uh, more talented. And how about this? Lakers cover all of the bases you want in pro sports. Mm -hmm. They have a story franchise with superstars. LeBron and AD. They've built from within. Players like Kuzma, Caruso, and THT so far in the preseason. And then they can acquire top-level free agents. You saw that with Montrez, Hill, and Schroeder. So the Lakers cover all of the bases, and they're the click club favorite in my opinion. Yeah, what will be interesting to watch here between now and early next week, Kyle Kuzma's up for his rookie contract extension. That deadline's Monday. And so if he doesn't agree to an extension, then he's playing the season without it, could become a restricted free agent next year. You know, that's a player who, this is an important year for him. You saw him really grow last year. You know, Doris Burke made a great point on my podcast the other day. You saw him learn what a good shot and a bad shot was because he was on a team where the games mattered. Mm -hmm. But I think watching those Kuzma talks in the next few days will be interesting. All right, Jay, well, we'll all, we're always going to talk about what we expect from LeBron and the Lakers, but what is the, the next phase of this conversation for him and his legacy? Because he's trying to add another championship, go back to back with the Lakers. That's what he went to L.A. for. Jay Rose and I are about to get another heated debate about who's the GOAT, who's the greatest of all time, Jay Rose. You know what's happening? Look, barring injury, barring injury, Jay Rose, they're going to win their second. They're going to repeat. It just, and barring injury to LeBron James, it just feels like, you know, when I write down all the names on a piece of paper, I'm like, damn, they signed KCP back. Wow, they got Kyle Kuzma. Man, they got Dennis Schroeder. Man, they got Montrez Harrell. Man, they got Marcus Soule. I'm like, well, man, they got Wesley Matthews? Hold on a second. And then I'm watching the preseason games. And I'm like, Taylor Horton Tucker's putting in work like that? I'm like, how, how deep is this team? They're exponentially better than every other team in the National Basketball Association. You can write it down. And LeBron James, less is more. He led the league last year in assists. I think we're going to see the same of LeBron. Just his ability as a facilitator to make the game easier for everybody. He can still put his foot on the gas when he has to. But I think we're going to see LeBron have another phenomenal year at facilitating and making the game as simplistic as possible. Does that mean that they're your pick too, Jalen? Absolutely. No question about it. Head yeah. and shoulders. And the thing is, LeBron can actually pace himself. Mm -hmm. It's a 72-game season. He just came out of the bubble. They have so much depth that Jay and I just talked about. And Woj just mentioned that so many players have things to play for, yeah. incentives as well, including Kuzma. So they're going to be eager to play those minutes and put up big numbers. All right. Well, he's played over 1,500 games over 60,000 minutes. So you're right, pacing himself might be okay this season if he can with uh, some of those guys and the depth that they've added around him. All right, you see this crew right here. I believe Jay Will's gonna join us. We're gonna all hang out and consider the Lakers right now. The GMs also pick Giannis to be the MVP, which trends against actually what most media surveys have said. James Harden beat out Ooh. LeBron for Ooh. quote, player who forces opposing coaches to ball one out over drew holiday as the player switching teams who would have the biggest impact and miami's eric spolstra named the nba's best coach over greg popovich and yeah. nick nurse and then this is interesting the gms still consider steph curry the best point guard in the nba but by a lot less he only got 30 percent of the vote this year compared to 90 percent of the vote the year before. Damian Lillard finished second to him this year. Paul, if you had to pick one guy, you cannot hedge here. You have to vote for one guy like the GMs did. Who were you picking? Originally, I said Luka Dockage, but if LeBron's the best player and he played point guard, how is he not the best point guard in the league? <laughs> he led the league in assists. I mean, Won the final I, I forgot LeBron just went to point guard, by the way, and he's clearly the best point guard in the league. It's, it's it, okay. This survey is skewed here. Let me just first say this. We mean skewed. It's skewed is in the sense of like, you just can't just add the best player in the game, the Finals MVP <laughs> that led the league in assists, like, and then say he's eleven percent. So like, are they considering him a real point guard, or they're they, just they, saying? I mean, that, 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 that doesn't even make sense. He that was available sense. in the so point saying, guard Chris, so spot Paul, for the All Star game so, and All NBA this year. But, so but he if he's the guard. best player on this list, but they're talking about when he plays. I, this is He's stupid. The fifth point, this is best stupid. Point guard. This is dumb. Hey, this is like the year Bill Russell won MVP and wasn't even in the first team in all NBA. Oh, yeah, that's the type of still like wait. I know this, this is not a LeBron James, like this is not we're not like talking about that. We're just like it doesn't make sense. I, right? I get it. And like Steph Curry 
and I said it on the broadcast, like Steph Curry has to reclaim his title as the best point guard. Like when LeBron James got hurt and Kawhi. You just want Warriors fans. No, they hate me anyway, so who gives a damn? But this is what I'm saying. When Braun got hurt and Kawhi won the championship and won the finals MVP, they were like, Kawhi is the best player on the planet. Giannis just won the MVP. Giannis, Braun is probably the third or fourth. You have to show up every single year. Now, he might be the greatest shooter ever, Right? Like, he will go down as that, but you have to reclaim your title yeah. every single year. Yeah. And Dane Willard did some things last year from that point guard spot. This is this is just like boxing. When you don't fight for a year, you get stripped of your title, and yeah. you got to go back and Thank fight you. for it again. Thank you. It's the same difference. Now, we know how amazing Steph Ooh. Curry is, Dane Lillard. They're amazing, but you got to reclaim that. Dane Lillard has some phenomenal, some phenomenal games. But if LeBron is a point guard, he, he has to be the best point we'll guard. Let, yeah, led the league and assist. Oh, whatever. I, who cares? EM survey. Always fun. Up next, we take an in-depth look at the Brooklyn Nets' upcoming season. How high should our expectations be for KD and Kyrie in their first year of playing together? Stick around to find out. 7 Eastern, then Kyrie, KD, and the Nets take on the Celtics. Over on ESPN at 1030, the Suns hosting the Lakers. All right, guys. We are just four days away from the start of the NBA season. And you know what that means. The Jumps previously on segments are back. This is like when your favorite TV show returns from hiatus. We're going to catch you up on everything that happened since the last time you saw them. So now it is time for previously on the Brooklyn Nets. I know my post-ups are negotiable, but I, I think four and a half works, like eight. I mean, we negotiated. I, think, I thought we was going to do two and a half, uh, half post-ups a game. The half one is like, I throw you the ball in the post and you just throw it right back out to me. But on paper, the Nets should be right in the mix for being a contender. But this is all dependent on Kevin and Kyrie being healthy. Steve Nash news hit the media like a bombshell kind of out of nowhere. How did you hear, Spence? Well, it was just saying it's break news and <laughs> you kind of just, uh, you know, it's, it's long once they say it. <laughs> It's something that I've, I've thought about in the back of my mind and gained momentum with that thought that it's time for me to step out and take a challenge. He definitely brings attributes and traits that I think are unique to this situation. I can't help but compare Steve Nash to Steve Kerr, another guy who came in without coaching experience, although I guess Steve Nash was probably a little better player. Kevin Durant returning to action last night. Man, this was so Great. First it. time since tearing his Achilles in Game 5 of the 2019 Finals. It will take him a while to truly feel back in his own body. He's on a new team with a new coach, and that will also be an adjustment. I think it's realistic to think 90, 90% of his old self may be better as the season goes on, and that's an all-NBA player. I mean, that's how good Kevin Durant is. And he's ready to address the NBA like the numbers on the house. We now welcome in NBA reporter Malika Andrews. Welcome, my friend. You will be covering the Nets this season for ESPN. Mm -hmm. And Malika, you heard the cliffhanger heading into this season, the mm. long-awaited debut of Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on the court together. You just heard Zach Lowe say 90%. What are your expectations for year one of the <laughs> KD and Kyrie show? I mean, they're high because this organization's expectations of themselves are high, Rachel. We hear these guys talk about, well, we don't want to put too much pressure on ourselves. Well, we don't want to say we're all coming back and we're out here to win it and take over the East. But at the same time, when I talk to folks around that team, they say they know. They know what they're going for. They know that not making an Eastern Conference Finals appearance, as high as those standards may be, that is already what's expected of them, and it's what they are expecting of themselves. So, yeah, I, I expect that of them. So my, my thing is I, everybody has expectations for this team. I think when you really mm. break it down, if you were to compare it to Clippers, mm -hmm. you have all of this new talent coming together and they have all of the ability. They have a great bench. They have a great staff. I actually love the staff that Steve Kerr has brought brought in, right? He's brought in other players. Uh, excuse me, Steve Nash. He's brought in other players. He brought mm -hmm. in D'Antoni. So he's got a great, great staff there to help him navigate the first year coaching. But I think this is kind of like the Clippers where it's like they need to develop their chemistry and that's not it's not like championship or bust. I think the Clippers put too much pressure on themselves and I think when they failed it like that pressure fell on them too. Right. So I think the Nets are just going to take it easy. I don't think they have to win a championship for this year to be successful. Well, when you add arguably the best player in the league to your roster, it's always going to be championship or bust. Mm -hmm. Now, if Kevin Durant can play at an MVP MVP level top five, top three, 
then this team has a chance to get into the finals. These are the expectations that come with a superstar like Kevin Durant. And then you have Kyrie Irving in his own right. He's a, a superstar who's won a championship. That's always how it's going to be. LeBron goes somewhere. KD goes somewhere. Expectations are championship. Yeah. Well, speaking of Kyrie, all eyes are going to be on him tonight because it's just preseason, but it's his first actual first game back in Boston. Remember, he didn't play when the Nets visited there last year. So, Malika, is there any bad blood left on the Celtics side after Kyrie's free agency departure a couple seasons ago? Well, when you ask them, they're going to say no, and they've done pretty well in their own right as as Kyrie has departed, right? It's not like they've fallen off a cliff. So I think the Celtics are happy with where they're at. Brad Stevens has said repeatedly that he's happy with uh, the way, you know, things ended with Kyrie, with him moving on. I think it's Celtics fans, right, that are still kind of hanging on to that a little bit, and potentially rightfully so, right? Kyrie Irving sat in front of them and said that he intended to re-sign, and then that didn't happen. That's the business of basketball. But I was...